Hi everyone, Faisal here. In this video, I'll show you how to design a paper bag. The steps are simple, but the most important part is the die cut, also called the bag template. It defines how the bag folds, where it's trimmed, and how everything fits together when printed. That's usually the part that takes the most time, with lots of small details and common questions. Things like, will the bag fold and open correctly? Will it work at the print shop? Are the measurements accurate? Will the flaps align as expected? What if there's a mistake in the template? We're going to simplify all of that into one clear step, so you can follow along with confidence and avoid any printing issues. In just one step, you'll draw the die cut perfectly and export it for print confidently, knowing that we've finished the most important part of the process. This ensures your design is ready for production without errors or delays at the print shop. In designing the paper bag, which is the die cut drawing. Now, the whole thing is just like working with a poster or a flyer, it's easy. You just place your design in it, add the required titles, like the client's name and your product's name. All right, let's take a look together. We'll start the explanation with the script. So, our explanation in this video is based on a specific script that draws the die cut for us. I'll leave the download link for the script in the video description below, you can download it for free, of course. This script will make the whole process much easier for us. All right, let's check it out together. We go to File. Then from the Script menu, I go down here to something called Other Script and click on it. After that, I select Paper Bag here and hit Open. Let's take a look together at the language that appears at the beginning. Honestly, I don't know if it's Ukrainian or Russian, but that's not important. With practice, I memorize the numbers that will show up now, and I'll explain them to you. With time and practice, you'll memorize them yourself. All right, the first thing you need to know is that this script uses millimeters, not centimeters. So 270 here means 270 millimeters, which is 27 centimeters. 20 centimeters, okay. What is 27 cents? It starts with you in the bag width, meaning the front of the bag. So now that you are holding the bag, you will find that what is visible to you on the face, which is called the front of the bag, its width will be 27 cents, or 270 millimeters. Okay, we give it okay. 270 or 270 millimeters. Okay, we confirm that. It gave me 100 millimeters. What is this 100 millimeters? Let me explain. This can have different names depending on the country, but sometimes it's called the bottom of the bag, or the side of the bag, or the second side of the bag, or the fold of the bag, depending on the terminology. Here, we have it set as 10 centimeters. Of course, I'm explaining now using a specific bag or certain measurements, but you should enter the measurements that you need, because when you're asked to design, They'll request the dimensions based on the information about what's going inside the bag or according to the details the client provides. So, I'll click OK here. We've talked about the bottom of the bag. What is 39.5 or 395 millimeters? That's the height of the bag. We started at the beginning with the width of the bag, then the sides of the bag, and now I have the height of the bag. I'll click OK here. I have 30 millimeters, which is the small square, and the second small one is also 30 millimeters, meaning it shows 3 millimeters. I'll click OK for that as well. Now it has given me our die cut, or the machine for the bag, in the exact shape we want. Let's take a look at it together. I chose the shape, the one called group. Now, if you want to give the printer the printing film, you know that the stroke, the dashed line made up of dots, indicates the folding area. So I can select it here, go to Window, then to Stroke, and choose Dash. Here, you can set it to 4, for example, and it will show up for you. A segment like this one, which is the folding area, you need to know this in the field of die cutting or when preparing files for printing. Okay, I simplified it here, but there are also other things that need to be marked for folding like this one and this one. But to keep the explanation quick, you can add those later on your own. 
As you can see, I've simplified a step that a lot of people find complicated, and many people struggle with it. A lot of people say, how do I draw die cuts? How do I do this or that? No, these die cuts are already available for you, and you can use them before you start working on any design. You can make a printout, a small printout or a segmented printout, meaning you print it out in parts, and then you can glue it together and see if the bag actually closes properly or not. Now, these small circles that people ask about, these are the circles where the bag's string goes through. After the bag is closed, printed, and cut, a string is threaded through these holes so you can pull or carry the bag. Here, we prepare something simple to place the design on. Of course, you can do this according to your design or whatever works best for you. But what I want to explain is that what matters to you or what will be visible to you, is this first side, which is always on the right in the bag. This is side number one. The bag always has the same design on both sides, if you notice. So you can put the side, or you can repeat it. And here, with the second one, I took it as well. This could be the back or the second side. I mean, is it possible for me to get the logo? What I can do is get my logo in this way. I can root it and then take a smaller version from it, just like this. This method allows me to have both the original and a smaller logo for different uses. Of course, hold shift while resizing, like this. And I can repeat it here, depending on if this is done quickly. Okay, and I might just send it so the design is visible to me. Now, some people ask, what color will this be when printed? As you can see, it will stay white. I'm talking about the sides of the bag, unless you add a color to it. So, we could choose a specific color that matches. To go with the design, you could choose this color, or maybe this color would look nice, or something like that, like a green color for the bag. Or honestly, I don't really prefer that. It really depends on you, but the point I want to make is that you can have the bottom or the side of the bag in a specific color you choose. And of course, you can color each bottom in a different way. So, this is the bottom. If you imagine the bag while you're holding it in your hand, it has a bottom on the right side and a bottom on the left side. You could also, just like the spine of a book, sometimes I've worked a lot with paper bags, they put the logo there. The company's logo is placed on one of the sides. Let's say this is your company's logo and it's placed on the side of the bag. So imagine it. When it's printed, you'll find it there. It looks really, really nice. You can have it placed here, depending on what's required of you. I mean, whenever you're working on anything, let's say, packaging design, whether it's for medicine boxes, cosmetics, or food packaging, always, always, guys, you need to do a printout yourself. Whether it's on regular paper that you stick onto cardboard and then cut out by hand, meaning you cut the die cuts, shape them, put the glue, stick everything together, and so on, you have to always, always do this. Even if it's the script we used and you're confident in it, or it gave you exactly the result you wanted. 100%. You have to start with hands-on work at the beginning. If you have a project like this, you need to make a dummy by hand, as they call it, or a prototype so you can see your work properly and check how your design actually looks. It's not just about sending it off to the printer and thinking they're going to handle everything, because a lot of times mistakes happen, or they'll call you and tell you something doesn't match up, or something is off. The bag didn't seal properly, you know, things like that. Basically, you're just making things easier for yourself. Let's be honest, you're saving yourself a headache. That was our method for today explaining how to design a paper bag in a very, very simple way. And like I mentioned, 
I'll leave the script as a download link in the video description. If anyone has any questions, please write them in the comments and I'll make sure to reply. Thank you!